In this proxy video, I'll cover what happened in the last few days for two stocks, MicroStrategies, ticker MSTR, and Neptune Digital Assets, ticker NDA. We'll go over quickly a few news and also price action to see what to expect next week. So let's start. MicroStrategy had a big announcement of their 2121 plan. So they plan to invest $42 billion into Bitcoin in the next three years. So this announcement secures pretty much $42 billion buy of Bitcoin for the next three years. iBit, the ETF from BlackRock, has been accumulating also at an alarming rate. So only these two entities will buy a lot of Bitcoin. So that's buying demand for a finite asset, therefore a lot of buying pressure for the next three years. That's only two entities. A lot of people are going to buy much more during that period. Some will sell, obviously, but when you're playing in billions, it's a significant amount of Bitcoin. We have not started the banana zone and also Bitcoin has not broke out first of the recent all-time high but also many people will not start buying bitcoin before it gets to one hundred thousand dollars per coin after that many of them will take seriously the asset and start buying it's kind of funny that they don't want to buy it now cheaper but i guess everybody has its own price at which they are convinced or more comfortable buying the asset. I mentioned this in a couple of my videos already. I think MicroStrategy, the ticker MSTR, with their intelligent way of leveraging Bitcoin between issuing shares and raising cash to invest in Bitcoin will benefit greatly in five to 10 years or even forever. Why? Because they are committed to buy and hold Bitcoin. That lowers supply and ensures a buying pressure on the asset for a very, very long time. What happened lately? Well, after the big run from 180 to 267, well, we came down to 226, 227. So what, what did I tell you guys to do? buy on red days buy on dips so on, when will the price stop i get that all the time people are asking when is it a good time to buy the easy answer is on red days but even easier is after a big push in price you see it here we have seen it twice already here you see from 179 up to I guess even this high 226 then three trading days down from 225 up to 193 that's quite a big correction after that green candle and then continue on and then we correct again so on these dips it's a good idea to buy it can correct lower that's why I indicated to spread your buys do not put a big chunk of your position at one specific price because it's a flip coin. Either you could be at the top, you could also be very, very lucky and get exactly the lowest price, or you can be in the middle or somewhere, somewhere in between. Because we do not know what's gonna happen, we divide our buys in multiple buys, and if you buy on dips here, Red candle here, red candle here, red candle here, and red candle here. The average price, yes, is going to go higher, but you are ensuring good entry points for the next movements. If we end up in a trading range like this in the future, well, here, let's say between this was a support of 120. Okay, so you would say, okay, every time it goes below 130. So below 130, I buy. So you buy here, 
you buy here, here, multiple times. You even got the, the position here, but this would be a little more of a fake out here. You buy in this region, you buy here again, here again, here again. And if you want a day trade, so you will tighter trade, you buy here, you sell at this region, you buy again, sell top, buy again, it didn't work, buy again, sell top. So it's up to you to decide what to do. But on the way up, you can add on red days, on trading ranges, you buy near the bottom you will not get always 120 but you your average will be great and if you accumulate at 125 124 125 124 and then it breaks up above 180 then you have a great base a great position for the next movement if it goes to 268 and then it corrects down to 225 your average is still 125 so does this matter to you? No. You let the asset go. So that's how you build positions. That's how you look for it. Easiest trade in 2024 and probably in 2025, MicroStrategy. The most performant asset so far this year, MicroStrategy. The simplest to understand related to Bitcoin, MicroStrategy. Is it better than the ETF? Yes. Is it more volatile? Yes. But why is it better? Well, first of all, ETFs have fees. MicroStrategy, when you buy the shares, there's no fees. That's the first good thing. The second thing, the ETF follows the Bitcoin price or tries to be exactly like the Bitcoin price. Therefore, you have a volatility near 1. 1 1.1, let's say. No more than that. With MicroStrategies, you get a volatility of 1.5. So yes, it moves higher when Bitcoin goes higher, and it moves lower than when Bitcoin corrects. But if you can tolerate the Bitcoin volatility, you can tolerate MicroStrategy volatility. MicroStrategy's volatility ratio will change as they buy more Bitcoin. Depending on the proportion that it buys, that ratio will be modified because the more and more they have, this ratio will evolve with the price action of Bitcoin. When Bitcoin moves extremely quickly, MicroStrategy will move even faster. So if you want volatility, if you want better returns than the ETF, MicroStrategy, and if you want to avoid fees, management fees that are yearly management fees from what i recall micro strategies again so these are the advantages of the stock so for now momentum is up everything is quite bullish it's normal to get corrections we just got rejected on bitcoin also so that also triggered a downwards movement in the stock it doesn't always correlate but it's pretty close so you have an idea of what to do. But the overall tendency of this stock right now is up and to the right. And I believe it will continue. Next stock now. So now let's have a look at Neptune Digital Assets, ticker NDA, and the TSX Venture. This is a Canadian stock. The price that you see here, I believe, yes, it's in Canadian dollars. It's not in the US dollars so this stock for those who don't know has a big portion in bitcoin quite a large portion in solana and then small positions in atom ethereum dot grt they also have a nice cash position and an investment of about four million dollars in spacex all these numbers are in Canadian dollars. We had the big run-up of the asset this week. So from 40 cents up to a peak of $1.26. So because we are on a breakout and it's an exponential phase type of movement, I told you guys that it was extremely difficult to determine 
if the stock would continue upwards and if it corrected where it would stop. This is the one hour chart. Just select the one hour chart just to be able to have more data and look at different levels of support. We see here that the volume gradually decrease the last few days. So did the price action. So in here, I thought we would have stopped at around $1. We did not. We went as low as 83 cents and then settled above 90 cents. So it seems that 90 cents is our support but now even 95 it's a quite nice level so the first thing that you need to see with these types of assets is well are they going to behave a little bit like crypto is it going to be a pump and dump is it going to be just an exponential phase and then it corrects down to uh, 40 cents or 50 cents for now it does not seem to be the case and why is that well because of the assets within the company so I'm working on tracking the price action and also the ratio of the value of the assets and the market cap of the company to see how that ratio evolves determine where what are the max ratios when it's overvalued and the low ratios when it's undervalued why? Because this could help us determine when it is time to buy the asset at a discount and when we are overextended and you could take profits because we are high in relationship to the value of the assets. I'm working on that. I'll share that eventually in the upcoming videos. It's a lot of number crunching, so I have to set that up. But at this stage, one of the main things that I'm happy about is that we settled above 90 cents. Is it going to hold? We will see. On the one hour chart, we also see that the MA50 is going towards 90 cents. We are actually at 86. So this trend line will also act as support. So it's going to get close to 90 cents. We will see what will happen. Maybe this will let us push upward. One strategy to look into in the upcoming weeks is always to look at Fridays. Fridays are key. Why? Depending on what the assets are doing, mainly Bitcoin and Solana during that time, if there's a big jump in price between Friday after market close and Monday, we could see a big nice jump in price the next Monday when the stock starts to trade so depending on the momentum of bitcoin and solana sometimes on fridays it could be a good idea to buy stock at the last seconds the last minutes of the trading day on friday to be able to capture a great price prior to next monday that it's only when the assets are going parabolic extending to the upside that could help us get great prices sometimes discrepancies but also like i indicated the ratio will help us a lot so uh, i'm happy about the support i'm also happy that we settled in volume we will see what will happen with volume right now compared to these regions where it was lower are we going to maintain liquidity and amount of shares traded per day that would also be interesting to look out and obviously the price action of Bitcoin and Solana if we break all-time highs for Bitcoin what will Solana do will Solana just follow Bitcoin catch up to Bitcoin or even perform better than Bitcoin we will see and that will influence the stock of Neptune digital assets the other assets also may influence it, but they're on lower percentage of what we have. Also, because of the SpaceX shares, if SpaceX does anything extraordinary or comes into the news, this could trigger also price movements for the stock. 
if also the company announces that they bought more shares of SpaceX for whatever reason, that could also influence the stock price. We also got news on October 31st that Neptune Digital Assets is looking into see if they can get credit facilities of potentially up to 25 million US dollars to what? To be used to buy more crypto assets, mainly Solana and Bitcoin. It could be the other assets too. So that also is something to look forward to, see if they can actually secure those funds because these companies are smaller, they don't have the facilities that MicroStrategy has to access capital. This is a Canadian company compared to MicroStrategy who is in the US market. And also keep in mind that MicroStrategy has generates a little cash flow from their AI services that brings you know a few hundred million dollars per year or per quarter so that that actually brings some liquidity into the company and that also is cash flow that can help banks be lenient and give MicroStrategy more credit to work with Neptune Digital Asset does not have that stream of cash coming in within the company yes there's the staking rewards that are added, but is that sufficient for banks to give them additional funds? We will see. But if they are successful in acquiring that $25 million credit, then it could trigger a snowball effect where we will have more rounds of either credit or maybe even issuance issuance of shares eventually to have more capital and continue this micro strategy like strategy with Neptune digital assets but like I indicated quite happy that we settle on price after this huge pump it's normal that people take profits from 126 to almost dollars that's a 25% or 30% drop that's also why I say usually don't chase once it, the price has exploded on the stock. You need to wait until it settles. And now we will probably trade between 90 and $1 for a while. And if we get back to 110 or something like that, it could trigger another huge movement to the upside. And that will allow us to go further. But you accumulate in the 90 to $1 region, then you get a nice entry price. If we get above 110, 115, 120, or even we go to 130, then you have a nice position where you enter into the stock. And if for whatever reason it breaks down because you accumulated in this region, you get out. Yes, there's a loss, but you don't have a loss that comes from 120 and you're selling at 85 or 87 cents or even 80 cents which is a big different in price so you minimize your losses and that way you can find the best region to accumulate the stock in each of the phases where it goes so for those who have questions leave them in the comments I'm gonna try to answer as many as I can but I still have my position in Neptune Digital Assets, very bullish on these small proxies, extremely bullish on MicroStrategy. Eventually, if these small proxies run a lot faster than MicroStrategy, I could take some of the profits from these companies and put it back on MicroStrategy, for example. And I said also that one of my strategies eventually is that if we ever top near the end of 2025 I would take profits from these proxies and put them into Tesla that's my other big plan we will see because if there's continued demand for Bitcoin even at the end of 2025 
there could be a possibility that the bear market could be very, very thin, not very, very deep in correction. And if that's the case, then we could even keep these positions way longer than expected. We will see. But my guess is that we will have still the bear market near the end of 2025, but we could have a, maybe just a correction of 30% instead of 50 or 60% that we have seen before. So that could be a possibility. But because we don't know, normally the safer way would be to sell at the top and then buy at whatever base we go. If it's 50% again and we get to $500,000 per coin on Bitcoin, well, we will buy some at 250000 If it just correct 30%, well, we'll buy it at a level two. So each strategy can be valid. We will define it here on the channel as we go along. I hope you will tag along in this great journey that is investing in Bitcoin-related assets. See you all on the next one.